खुशी के ना चाहे किंतु कौन मूल्य तुम पाने चुनने विषय मूल्य लो चुकाते होए तुम पान अपना चुनने खोती कारोक और अपना प्रयोजन दर चुनने हो तुम पान खूब विपद चुनोक यही शहरे रोलो टकी कोताव छाई तो कोताव धुआं धुआं क्यों किचु बोले ना कहनो चुपचाप धुआं शोध चोकरे कहनो अकुन पेरीए का चे शोध छेर शिमा देख ले ही निभिए दाव जालन तो सिगरेट बिड़ी इर नहीं कोनो खामा पब्लिक प्लेस धूमपान करानी शेद अमान्य को लिचोरी माना हबे धूमपान कोर बिन्ना कोर्टे दे बिन्ना धूमपान खूब बिपोत जानोग सिगरेट स्मोकिंग इज इंजुरियस टू हेल्थ इट कॉजेस कैंसर धूमपान शास्त्रीय पक्के खोती कारोक इट ही कैंसर इट कारण I can't recognize it. Where is my school? Who thought this might really happen? Never thought the risk could turn into such a disaster. But why it has happened? Is this climate change? Are we waiting for such a disaster to happen? Such a fatal future? This is my city. I have lived for most of my life in this city. This city runs in my blood, my consciousness, and in my creative discourse. Will this city just vanish? The danger signals have long been hanging out there. We are pushing our next generation to the disaster. Do we want to commit suicide? Climate is nothing but long-term weather. Climate change is a change in global climate caused by the increase in greenhouse gases. The gases with the potential to warm the world, which are released through human activities. Particularly urbanization and lifestyle changes. Rising global temperatures is the obvious fallout. Catering to widespread sea level rise, inundation, and extreme weather events. The most significant greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide emitted mainly through chimneys of industries using coal. Tailpipe of polluting vehicles and use of energy-intensive gadgets in residential and commercial buildings. 
With the greenhouse gases increasing ever so rapidly, Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, a platform of eminent scientists across the world, has predicted that Kolkata is likely to be the worst affected Asian city in 2070. Pushing behind the cities like Dhaka, Mumbai, on potential disaster scale. The report has also warned that the damages to property will be highest in Kolkata. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, which subject will you teach us? Subject? Future of yours. I suppose most of you say in Kolkata. Yes, sir. But have you heard that scientific research found out that by 2070, most people living in Greater Kolkata will actually be drowned under water? No, sir. The current estimate is about 15 million. The bottom line is that this beloved city of ours, Kolkata, will be out of global map if we do not Start to prepare now. The rise of sea level is one of the globally highest in Shundurpun, which is at the southern fringe of Greater Kolkata. High intensity storms and flooding will mainly trigger Kolkata's disaster. Another report prepared by World Bank has predicted that the city, in not too distant future, may remain waterlogged for 15 days at a stretch due to sudden spell of very heavy shower, while the summer heat will become increasingly unbearable. Throughout the world, the temperature is gradually increasing breaking the record of maximum temperature routinely every year. And Kolkata is no exception. The telltale signs of climate change and its increasing impact, be it a sudden splurge of heavy showers resulting in acute waterlogging over hours, or the almost missing winter chill, have become too obvious to ignore. Have you heard? What? That ice is melting in Antarctica. <laughs> so what? Ice does not fall in my city. <laughs> Hence there is no question of it melting. Right, but even then, we can't escape from its impact, none of us. Way back in 2009, Cyclone Aila had completely devastated the city with a speed of about 110 kilometers per hour. Scientists predict that devastation caused by Aila 
may only be a trailer compared to what is possibly in store in 2017 or even earlier. Much stronger cyclones have generated in the region during last decade or so, though most of them fortunately bypassed the city. But Kolkata cannot be lucky every time. Man-made interventions magnify the risk of destiny-designed scenario. Huge population pressure with many living in unsafe and temporary houses, slums and otherwise. Poor drainage and a lack of a proper response system and preparedness has turned Kolkata into a hotbed of climate vulnerability. Actually, city's risk lies within its unplanned development history. Chance directed, chance erected, as Roger Kipling said, hundreds of years back and we have hardly changed. Three small villages, Shutanuti, Gobindapur and Kolikata, are told to be the precursor to our mega metropolis, which is sprawling and bursting at its seam. Kolkata is one of the signature cities in the country and one of the biggest global metropolis. However, over the next five decades or so, the city has only grown organically with little planning and accommodation for environmental components. The situation has come to such a pass that a study has actually pointed out that Kolkata emits maximum greenhouse gases among 40 major cities in Asia and all from institution to individual have to take responsibility. Incidentally, the residential and commercial sectors contribute a fourth of the city's carbon emission. As a matter of fact, apart from institutional weakness and lack of planned action, the threat has been enhanced by the actions rather than non-actions by common people. Can't you feel that Kolkata's weather is changing? Oh, yes, definitely. Almost uh, no sweater during winter. Monsoon now means a few days of abnormally high rainfall. That's the point. But this is a global problem. What can we do sitting here? Actually, a lot. Scientists are saying that at least one-fourth of the climate change impacts can be countered locally. We throw thin plastic caddy bags on roads and they come back to haunt us by clogging the sewers and trigger water logging. 
and we keep repeating the same mistake day after day. The throw plastic wherever and whenever you want mindset has reached to such a level that some of the water canal stretches have actually turned into plastic stretches. We fill up water bodies and wetlands to construct and concretize and the local drainage goes for a toss. We allow the canal outlets of the city to become choked and the monsoon water gets stranded. Despite being one of the cities with minuscule greenery expected in an international city, we keep on unnecessarily chopping trees and building upon and concretizing the parks and gardens. While any international city is mandated to have 15 to 20 percent green open space, we remain far off from even double digit value. Kolkata has always been a naturally subsidized city with River Ganga flowing in one side and sprawling wetlands in the other. Where cities waste water, gets automatically treated and with significant amounts of water under its soil. However, the city and its citizens over the years have done everything possible to throw away these advantages and pursue a so-called developmental model which may be termed suicidal. Any idea what will happen to a frog? if I put it in a very hot, boiling water. Mm, it will just jump away. Yes, but if I put the frog in a very mildly warm water and make arrangement to make the water warmer, it will not be able to know that the water is warming up. Mm. Similarly, the temperature is also rising around us. The city, once known as a city of ponds, gets its water bodies and wetlands filled up to build realities. The rivers are encroached upon and drying up, the groundwater being overdrawn and wasted. The city's public transport, once a model to the rest of the country, have become gradually obliterated with the dominance of private cars and hence leading to more congestion on roads, more combustion of fuels and, as a result, free local warming to suffer and toxic air to inhale. The city, with such a great sunshine for many months, hardly has solar installations. The buildings are created in a manner so that creation of urban heat islands becomes routine. Urban heat islands are created when cities of whispering tall building towers do not allow the locally generated temperature to dissipate. Uh, 
Though one third of city population live in slums, slums are worse prepared to face a high intensity disaster. A sudden storm in midnight or lashing flood triggered by increasing precipitation, coupled with rising river water level, may put thousands in slum areas under threat, warn experts. Many predict that with upstream water flow in Ganga gradually depleting and salinity increasing in sea water due to increased evaporation, Ganga, flowing beside Kolkata, will gradually turn saline in 2070 or even earlier. Kolkata may need a desalination mechanism to produce drinking water. Island after island is going underwater in Sundarbans. Hmm? Let it be. I don't live there. And why should people be going there in the first place? There is no proper facility, no infrastructure. Completely disastrous. Even one cannot see a tiger. Fair enough. But the problem is that Sundarbans keeps coming closer to us every moment. Maybe today's Shundarbon is tomorrow's Kolkata. Shundarbon, habitat of Royal Bengal Tigers, being hardly a hundred kilometers away from Kolkata at the southern fringe of West Bengal close to Bay of Bengal is a mangrove infested, unique ecological zone spread over 102 islands, almost equally split between human and wildlife habitations. Always a place with incidences of extreme weather events, the frequency of high-intensity storms has raised significantly over the recent years. Globally acknowledged as a climate hotspot, the sea level rise adjacent to Sundarbon is also more than double to global average which has led to significant land erosion in the area, which holds close to five million people. It is quite ironical that an area with abject poverty and hardly any contribution to the cauldron of climate change, Shundurpun is one of the worst sufferers of climatic impacts. One of its islands, Lohachara, has completely sunk, while another, Ghodamara, has been largely sucked by river. Ghoramara, once a sprawling human habitation, has shrunk over time. Embankments continue to be eaten up by marauding waves, and many people have fled to other islands or beyond Shundurpan, while others struggle to survive. The impact of climate change is so huge that even Kopil Muni's temple in Shagod Island, a signature and globally known place of worship, has to be shifted many times to survive. Actually, Shagod Island remains highly threatened with parts of it already severely affected by the advancing sea. Overall in Shundurpan, the livelihoods like agriculture and fishery have taken a beating and often migration becomes the only option to survive.
most of the migrants turn into daily laborers either in Kolkata or other cities and barely live without any decent quality of life. It is ironical to note that while urban people like us have done everything possible to contribute to climate change and made areas like Shundurbun vulnerable, Shundurbun, with its mangrove shield, sustains Kolkata. Quite clearly, if Shundurbun does not hold firm, Kolkata will not survive as well, especially with high intensity storms likely to increase. You mean to say everything is our fault? But where are we going wrong? Can't we change the fate? Sure we can. But the question is, are we ready to change? I am ready to change, even at this age, because this is the city of Rabindranath Tagore. This is the city of Vivekananda. This is the city of Jagadish Chandra. This is the city of Shottujit Rai. This is the city of Mother Teresa. Are you going to spend your life Wearing a mask like this? Think about it. We waste water. We waste energy. But everything could and can still be different. Even the Global Report observed that things can still be turned around if we embrace new technology, new scientific knowledge, and sustainable mode of lifestyle as soon as possible. We need to act together and also as individuals. A person has to stand alone sometimes to establish truth. We must remember the lines that Dr. Stockman in Ibsen's Enemy of the People says, the strong must learn to be lonely. Even our own Rabindranath sings, Joditur Dakshune Kyu Nashi Tabi Akla Chalodi. If no one responds to your call, carry it alone. Irrespective of caste, religion, sex, or financial differences, today, because of this climate change, we are all in the same boat. We are all united but vulnerable. We must take a pledge that in no case we shall turn a danger signal into a disaster situation. No, never because of our own fault, never. Germany is leading the way, setting an example by providing solutions in areas like water, wind and solar. Considering the fact that India is in a much more favorable position with regards to annual sunshine hours compared to Germany, this gives us a huge advantage and enormous still untapped potential to change our future. COP23 in Germany in its former capital Bonn, is another platform for the governments to work on further elaborating the details 
regarding the implementation of the Paris Agreement 2015. The objective is to demonstrate that promising activities are being implemented to reduce greenhouse emissions, adapt to climate change, redirect investment flows towards low-carbon economic partners, and improve resilience against the consequences of climate change. The Paris Agreement 2015 calls for concerted action to hold the increase in global average temperature to less than 2 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial levels. But scientific research is revealing more about climate change each year and we now know that change is occurring at a faster rate than we believed when the Paris Agreement was forged. That means that we must embrace the Paris Agreement's more ambitious target of limiting warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius and achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 at the latest.